The federal government is to rent out unoccupied private and government houses located in various towns and cities across the country. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, disclosed this in Abuja while playing host to the Senate Committee on Housing led by its chairman, Sam Egu. Fashola also explained that the non-provision of land was why the federal government was not constructing houses in Lagos and River States, adding that over 3,000 affordable housing units were being constructed in 34 states and the federal capital territory. Responding to an inquiry on what government was doing about empty houses scattered all over Nigeria, Fashola said his ministry has, cut, has started collating the buildings and would list them out to collect rents on a monthly basis. Well, joining us live is Olamide Edoma Ejo, who is an urban planner. And also joining us will be Bolahun Olojide, who is a public affairs analyst, to help us make sense of this conversation. Good to have you, Olamide. Good morning. Good morning. And of course, uh, um, Bolahun Olojide, thank you also for being with us. All right, before we get Bolaho, we will uh, begin with Olamide. Olamide, we read of a federal high court in Abuja granting an order of interim for future in relation to 46 property belonging to the former chairperson of the board of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, um, the person of Ngozi Juliet Olejeme, and many such like uh, seizures. Is this a failure of our housing regulation sector? What do you think? Uh, well, the housing, the housing sector, uh, whether it's policy or whether it's implementation, has definitely uh, failed the population of Nigeria. Um, there's a large deficit, I think, from uh, 2012. It was uh, 17 million, and we're not building enough houses at the moment. Um, so actually, I think the the innovative proposal right now which is about taking back properties which are staying vacant which are um owned by the government um or even private uh individuals i think it's actually a very innovative idea and i think it's something that um is is positive however um i wonder who is going to access these properties once they go on the market for rent and is there going to be a controlled um are they going to control the rent value so that low-income communities can actually have access to these type of properties? Are they going to do any development around it so that it can be um, sectioned off for certain individuals? Mm. Um, so that's, those, are, those are the kind of questions that I have to ask for, um, around this um, innovative idea. Mm. And they're quite uh, valid questions. I, I can see that Bolaho is there. Uh, Mr. Olojede, do we have you now with us? Yes, I'm, I'm right here. Okay, great. Uh, now, how do we remedy the problem of unoccupied properties that appear to be a fallout of illegally acquired wealth? Um, I, I think we may need some sort of uh, legislation to help us. Um, while, while the minister was talking about leasing out those, those buildings, I'm wondering if there is an existing law that allows the government to take over private uh, uh, buildings and start leasing them out. So the, the legal part of things would need to be worked out. But apart from that, we need to have a list. We need to have the owners of these unoccupied properties. How much taxes did they pay in the last two years, for example? Uh, and, and that will help us to begin to uh, put faces and real names uh, to the ownership for the purpose of possible investigations, and if there is a need to do some confiscation, let's go ahead and do that as well. Mm. All right, let me come to Olamide. Um, the Minister of Housing, Fashola, has said that such houses will be leased. Now, the question is, will this address the problem, especially as concerns the poor, who may not be able to afford the lease even? Yes, exactly. I mean, that's exactly what I was saying uh, earlier. Just exa exactly that, that who is going to be able to access this. Um, from what I can see from newspaper um, and news re reports, it's, it's looking at that it's going towards middle income. And most of the innovative ideas, whether it's financing, whether it's mortgage, uh, whether it's for developers, uh, most of the ideas that are coming out from government or state government are around um, financing for middle income uh, people. And so there's still a gap 
for the low income communities and they are actually the majority of um of our country of the population so we definitely have to start thinking um around how can we gain access for these people for this group of people um i think you know there's so many different ways whether it's policy whether it's about looking at how do you finance uh, materials and and think about innovative materials that can cost less how do you encourage developers to do mixed mixed um income housing so that there's an offset of um of rent from those who are, or buying those who can afford it and those who cannot afford it mm -hmm. so there's so many uh, opportunities within this space but i think we have to think more about how do we encourage low income earners to be able to access housing and then also how do we also ensure that you know the middle income high income can also access housing but to be honest the market already allows for middle income and high income to access housing so the majority of what government and governance and people in that space should be thinking about is how do we ensure low income uh, earners can actually access housing all right let me do uh, please be on the stay on stay, stay on the line uh, as well as Bola home but i have a libros in studio and he, he has something to say also about this libros yeah um basically three concerns for me one was the one um, raised by Bola home on um, the legal framework and then mm. secondly um i i want i take statements made during courtesy visits um, or during press interviews with a pinch of salt um i only take statements from government seriously when government comes up with you know um it's like a concerted effort mm. a framework and government comes out to say look we have been working on this and we'll put the legal framework in place and then we have submitted a bill to the national assembly mm -hmm. and then that from so and so time this is what we're going to be doing and then lastly even the properties owned by government, how well have they managed them? You know. So, if recently I advocated on asset management for recovered properties, mm -hmm. because a situation where EFCC is the one recovering, they are the one prosecuting, they are the one investigating, they are the one to determine when to prosecute, and then the asset recovered might just be lying waste. And in some Somewhere. case, if you remember, even the Attorney General's letter also pointed to the fact that some of these assets were tampered with without authoriz authorization. Mm. So all of these are going to be problems if not properly, you know, harnessed. And then I don't like this idea of this populist, uh, um, uh, you throw pop populism, uh, because it will sound laudable and interesting. You just make statement without necessarily putting the framework in place. Fashola is a senior advocate and I don't expect him to say because my property is vacant and then government will just come and we'll let it out. Over. At the end of the government might even be paying much more to me in terms of damages than um, the money they would actually get, get from, from letting it out. How, do you, how are you going to manage it? Because hmm. also it is my fundamental right to own properties. You know, so if you need to take away that fundamental right because the property is vacant, then you also need to ensure that it's a constitutional matter. And lastly, quickly, so that I can give the floor for you know the well, guests, yeah. the, is, is the fact that government needs to have a proper, you know, um, tenancy laws that are properly regulated. Mm. You know, as as we speak now, even the property market is not properly regulated. So that's why even the pricing, you. You know, right. pricing is not determined by, in some cases, it's determined by, oh, yes, this house is in VR, yeah, is in location. Maitama, and, you know, and what's, you see, we, we, there are no mortgage, properly arranged mortgage system. So all of these need to be in place for you to begin to talk about taking people's uh, properties because we buy properties like people are going to buy yam and tomatoes from the market in Nigeria, yeah. and it's sad. Yeah, thank you very much, Libras, for that intervention. Now, let me come to you, Bola Hong. Um, I mean, we are seeking for answers and solutions. What, what can be done going forward to address the clear imbalance in our society, you know, where the poor are without any form of welfare or infrastructural cushioning, such as access to water, we talk about that on the daily, power, affordable trans, uh, you know, transportation, and the so-called rich are left to accumulate wealth largely unchecked. How do we come out from this sort of situation? Uh, there, there, there are some um, systemic tools that are available just that we have not been effective at using them properly. For example, taxation. Taxation is meant to be, apart from all the other reasons, a tool of wealth redistribution. That's why you have things like PSUN. It takes from people who earn the more and 
try to redistribute so that I can touch the people at the lowest rung of the ladder. I, I, I always like the United States example. One percent, top one percent earners in the United States pay close to 40 percent of the taxes. One pay 40 of the taxes. And that makes a pool of fund available to be able to address issues at the lower end of the the ladder. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we also need to address the issue of an effective sanction and reward system. So where people can do things and they know they will get away with it, it doesn't help the system. So someone can end up in jail even without, without going through uh, uh, the court system just because he stole a goods. Mm -hmm. And another person can steal in billions and be having fun all over the office. We must be able to address those kinds of situations to create a fair society that can redistribute wealth from the upper part and, and make sure the people are the best strong also have a fair share. All right. L l let me now wrap with uh, Olamide. I, I saw you, Olamide, nodding at uh, when uh, Libros was talking. Share your thoughts there very quickly. Yes, no, just uh, finally, I mean, I think uh, both speakers uh, have really touched on the topic. I think we need to think about the policies that actually govern uh, housing, mortgage financing, uh, developers, uh, and things like that, um, rent as well, so that there is some some uh, guidance to those who are actually left in the market to do these things. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the private sector. Uh, the government, unfortunately, hasn't really been able to provide housing to low income, provide housing really in general, especially social housing. So I think it, you know, it's been, it has been left to the private sector and the private sector will not touch social housing because it is a financial burden. It's a long-term financial uh, investment rather than a short-term financial investment. So we really have to think around um, all these issues and um, the government really needs to take control of that and really needs to think about um, how they govern that sector, how they manage that sector because there's actually a lot of work that still needs to go into it. Mm, a lot of work that needs to go into it. Thank you so very much, Alamide, and thank you also to Balahon. Do keep safe, both of you out there. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right.